Hey folks, Valentin Nemed here, and today I want to talk about the concept of response mechanics in general. The kind of ones we'll discuss here on the channel, why I think they're important, some basics about delivering a responsive experience, and hopefully to initiate some discussion. The term response mechanics in games can mean quite a few things, but in the context of this channel, that is response to damage. Either the response on the character they are fighting against, which in most cases is gonna be blood, gore effects, animation responses and ragdolls, that can be vehicle damage, and that can be destructible environments, turning a location from nice and peaceful to a complete mess, one explosion or a bullet at a time. Now, for the sake of not having this be censored in one way or the other, the video side will be entirely about destructible environments and vehicle damage, though character responses will be discussed too. Either way, you have many videos on that subject here on the channel. So, why do I think they're important? In the case of characters, that is visual feedback on the very enemy you are fighting against. You will feel the difference between no response or something shallow that will basically be the same for anything you use or anywhere you hit, compared to detailed and appropriate feedback on the receiving end for every shot. Like, for example, the boomer shooter instagib, compared to blowing off chunks at the point of impact where you hit the enemy. Or a limp ragdoll after the fatal hit, compared to physics affected death animations, like famously the Euphoria engine, or a more simple but really well made active ragdoll like in Ground Branch, Red Orchestra 2 Rising Storm 2, and Insurgency Sandstorm. As for a direct effect on the gameplay, that may come in the form of changes of behavior, where non-fatal hits have a significant effect, or aftermaths that indicate something has been happening there and danger may be nearby. In terms of destruction, you do have the visual factor. In most cases, the furniture or the props aren't directly the enemy, but detailed response does very much make a difference for how it feels. Does stuff break when hit by the appropriate force, or is the response just a nice particle effect that fades out and maybe leaves a decal? However, in destruction it often comes with a notable gameplay impact, in the form of cover that can get destroyed, opening new paths in the environment, Creators and regs that also can provide some degree of cover, and similar to the character stuff, vehicle damage having a consequence on the handling. Personally, I think that for the sake of visual feedback alone, proper response makes a massive difference in how it feels, but when you go beyond that, particularly with destruction, the gameplay consequences can lead to really interesting situations you couldn't otherwise have. Which leads to the question, what constitutes proper response? For characters, that would be an adequate amount of attention in every aspect. That means a decent looking response on the character himself at the point where you hit him, proportional staining to any splashing effect, blood pooling if the character was punctured, one way or the other, weighty animation responses, possibly with some form of change of behavior, and a configurable aftermath. I do have a full video exactly on this subject, on the basic mechanics needed to deliver a gritty responsive experience without going for something massively fancy. Another point worth noting is that response doesn't necessarily have to be realistic in order to deliver good feedback. Exaggerated effects can be fine, cartoonish stuff as well, whatever fits the style the game is going for. As for destruction, it is kind of different. Making fully responsive environments isn't always feasible. The gameplay impact I mentioned may not fit what the game is going for, and you can't always have very dynamic destruction in the style of Teardown or Red Faction Gorilla. So, what I'm personally looking for is consistency within what the game is going for. If the focus is on interior destruction, decent response on whatever proper furniture you shoot is to be expected. Even if you can't blow open new pathways, just visual transformation of a location can still make a very notable difference. If the game is going for breakable walls, it is reasonable to expect the all to break and not have the kind of situation where one wall responds beautifully, but the one next to it doesn't. That is actually the reason I personally find Bad Company 2 to feel more responsive than the latter Battlefield games. Because basically, you had far fewer walls tell you, well, nope, if you blast them. And lastly, if we're talking about a large scale strategy game, Detail can definitely be sacrificed there, as long as everything will respond consistently, leading to a messy aftermath. Consistency really is key. You play the game, you get familiar with the responses, and I think it is reasonable to expect it all to work by the same rules. A few more questions perhaps come up. Are they a must and can they be a central mechanic in a game? The answer to the first one, absolutely not a must. A game can be great despite showing very limited response. 
Some of my personal favorites are SWAT 4 and Battlefield 2, and there's barely anything there in our aspect. So, I'm not implying that every single game necessitates those, but the goal here is to highlight what those mechanics are, the difference they make, and what function they should provide. Apparently, the latter is not always clear. I've seen quite a few games with gore effects that deliver a very poor response. Yeah, some features are there, they are kinda flashy, but it feels weightless and they don't come together into much of anything. Like massive blood splashes and blood fountains, going into nowhere, not staining the ground, a center of mass body shot, detaching the head and limbs, for whatever reason, very poor physics for the body and the said detached limbs, or destruction in the form of scripted events, the occasional destructible wall and very selective props here and there. Now the second question, can they be a central feature? Definitely yes. It absolutely can be a key feature and a major draw to the game, as well as something that makes it stand out and stay very memorable. The key thing of course, central feature, not only feature. If you have barely functioning gameplay in boring environments but with awesome responses, that misses the whole bloody point. Those mechanics can and, in my opinion, very much should be a part of the experience but not be all there is to it. And even without going to the lengths of making them front and center, you can enhance the overall experience quite a bit with a solid response. There are many examples of that here on the channel. So, hope this does give you an idea of what the mechanics are, the kind of difference they make, what this channel is about and why I personally think they are very important. Do let me know what you think in the comment section, I do very much wanna hear your opinion, and subscribe for more content coming your way soon. Until next time!